It is uh, 25 past four, time for another of our fortnightly debates between Kelly O'Dwyer. Good afternoon, Kelly. Good afternoon, Tom. And uh, Richard Miles from the Labor Party and the member for Karai and the former mi Minister for Trade. Good afternoon, Richard. Good afternoon, Tom. How are you? I'm very good, thank you. Now, it's very good to see the two of you in the, in the studio. Now, firstly, um, Kelly, uh, when the, uh, uh, the new uh, federal government under Tony Abbott announced the Cabinet just a week or so ago, uh, everybody jumped up and down and said there's not enough women in it. In fact, there's only one. There's Julie Bishop. Um, Firstly, is this a problem? Secondly, why weren't you considered? <laughs> well, it's very kind of you to say that, Tom. Look, um, Julie Bishop is not only an excellent deputy leader, but um, an excellent foreign minister. And she will be um, t really brilliant around that cabinet table. I I've heard that she's already been intimidating people at the United Nations with a, with a, <laughs> a, a steely-eyed stare. No, well, the, the, the stare of death. Well, There's look, a bit of pantomime about I, that. I, 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 wouldn't, I wouldn't mess with Julie Bishop. So, so. <laughs> oh, I wouldn't either. <laughs> there you go. Well, it makes two of us. Um, look, uh, all the people who were promoted recently when Tony Abbott made his announcement regarding the ministry are all people who are very worthy, very talented, and every single one of them deserve their promotions. Um, the good news is we've actually got a lot of talent in the Liberal Party. Um, we've got a big talent pool. hate to say it, Richard, but I think Labor's got a bit of a talent puddle there. Um, and, and the great strength, I think, of our party is that we've got a lot of people to draw on. So I think everybody will be making a contribution. So, uh, Richard Mars, is, is the, the status of women in society taking a backwards step with the announcement of this new women-free cabinet? Well, it has. I mean, there's just absolutely no doubt about the fact that it has. And, and what's all, there's also no doubt about the fact that this is an issue upon which Tony Abbott clearly has a blind spot. I mean, it is utterly unacceptable that there is only one woman in the Cabinet. But, but the other point is that you hear Tony Abbott saying there are plenty of good women in the Liberal Party knocking on the door. Kelly and, and there is. You know, and, and I'm sitting next to one right now. I was, I was absolutely shocked that Kelly uh, was not promoted. And I know that it's hard for Kelly to say that. This but is I, probably I the kiss of death, because if you feel... Well, <laughs> Labor person, you say, oh, I think Kelly O'Dwyer is fantastic. That's probably the end of Kelly's career. She's the more, most formidable opponent I've come across. <laughs> <laughs> no, you, might have recovered. No, you might have recovered there, Richard. No, no. Kelly, Kelly is, is a, a person of talent who you would think would be on the front bench. But, the, but this is the point. Even in terms of the outer ministry and the PALSEC ranks, uh, Tony Abbott has not promoted women. And, and there is a real question to be asked here. He had choices. Like, he, he, this was not something that he was in a straitjacket. He was able to promote women and he did didn't, and it absolutely betrays a blind spot on his part. He promoted his daughters quite heavily during the election campaign. Well, he did that, um, but in terms of putting women into the ranks of government, um, th th this is a sad day, and and, uh, and and I think that it was surprising to me uh, that this is the, the first big decision that any Prime Minister makes, building his or her team, uh, and the way in which he's done it uh, shows an enormous blind spot. We'll take some calls in a moment, 9690693131332, but speaking of building teams, I know you're on Bill Shorten's team when it comes to the, uh, the Labor leadership question. And we had an uh, interesting story during the week. Uh, a, a Sydney taxi driver had said that Bill had been rather rude in the cab. And the taxi driver said there were several other people in the cab. And I've managed to establish that you were one of them. This is true. And, and, and the taxi driver also complained that when the fare came to be paid, apparently the fare was $15.60, and someone counted out exactly $15.60, no tip. Uh, <laughs> was that you, Richard Bale? Were you, were you the, the non-tipper in the cab? I, 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 well, I was not the person who, who paid the taxi driver. At least you tight with your own money. <laughs> if only you were tight with taxpayers' money. I was not money. the person who paid the taxi driver. Uh, listen, the, the, there was um, the idea that... Bill Shorten was rude uh, in that camp. Well, it's been known it's, to happen before. Uh, well, what about the uh, pie shop? Well, well I'm, I was, all I can tell you is I was a witness to this event. Um, there was no rudeness. There was no raised voices. It's disappointing that the taxi driver decided that having had Bill Shorten in his cab, the first thing he'd do is ring 2GB. Well, but what about the lack of a tip, though? I mean, maybe that's the cause of the concern. But, I mean, you know, if, I, if it was $15.60, I'd give him 17 or $18. I'd give him a 20 and say, just give us two back. Yeah, well, look... I mean, to uh, count out $15, and he said, in three twenty cent pieces. Well, well uh, uh, Bill was not the person who paid the taxi driver, but nor was I. It so <laughs> <who>, was, <laughs> was one of the, the, the staffers, and, and we were going into uh, Bill's first leadership debate, so uh, I, I honestly can't <laughs> answer that question. Well, they um, do say if you look after the pennies, the pounds will look after themselves. <laughs> uh, let's go to some calls. Bill, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Tom. Look, um... I was involved in the public service. We've got to get rid of this politicking with genders. Uh, I was involved in the public service many years ago, and a silly question was asked in Parliament 
uh, when McPhee was Minister of one particular department, and the question was, how many women do you have in your senior executive? Well, everyone went scurrying, and what we, we ended up with was women being put into positions Holes, bowlers, not on ability, but just to equal the, the numbers on gender. And this is exactly the same rubbish that's being thrown up now. You should be picking people on ability and not on gender. Well, Phil, uh, look, we, we need to go to news headlines, but I will say this. I remember getting a pamphlet about the, the wonders of living in Canberra, but it was dated 1969. And women back then, when they joined the public service, if they got even engaged, they were immediately sacked and sent home because once women were engaged to be married, of course, their, their husbands had to become the focus. So who knows, Phil, maybe they were just trying to sort of, re sort of realign the balance there. We'll go to Kelly O'Dwyer's response in just a moment and that of Richard Miles and more calls, 9600693131332. But first, though, uh, our all-male newsreader, Tony Tardio, joins us here <laughs> for news headlines. It is our 22 to 5, uh, Kelly O'Dwyer from the Liberal Party and Richard Miles from the Labor Party are here with us and they're taking your calls, 969 Nine hundred six nine three thirteen thirteen thirty two. Ken, good afternoon. Yes, good afternoon. Um, I just don't know what the shadow minister's on about. Uh, he seem, seems to forget the fact that he's uh, he voted Julia into power, then was very very handy when uh, Bill Shorten pulled the knife out of his back pocket and decided to stab Julia, and he jumped on the team. And here he is speaking about uh, inequalities in, to, in uh, women in politics. He's he's full of it. Well, Ken makes a good point, Richard, that if you were so keen to have women in, in positions of power, then you probably you shouldn't have opposed Julia Gillard when she was Prime Minister. Well, Julia Gillard did a great job as Prime Minister, which I've said on many occasions. Uh, we were... Uh, in, uh, well, and there is a but, you know, we're in a position where I think in order to put our best foot forward going into the last election, uh, Kevin Rudd represented that, and, and that's what the decision I made. And, and inevitably, when you're talking about a position like that, you're going to be making the decision on uh, lots of levels. But, but when we're talking about the percentage of women who are in a, sh in a cabinet of 20 people, and the best the Coalition can do is come up with one, now that's an issue, and it is an issue upon which Tony Abbott ought to be judged. Tommy, just going back to Kevin Rudd, I mean, uh, obviously you, you, you can never know because you can't run the election twice, but some of the polls suggest that he saved between 10 and 15 seats. Um, is that the feeling within the Labor Party, that the right decision was made because the, the election result was a lot better than what people had been fearing? It, look, I, I don't have any regrets about the decision that we took. Um, I, I think it was the, the right decision. It was an extremely difficult decision and, um, and the, the election has ultimately landed where it has. What I think, though, now is it's important to look back at this time from, from the Labor Party's point of view, understand that our disunity was a key reason why we lost the election and know that if we are ever going to make ourselves competitive again, we simply have to be unified in the way we go forward. Now, Kelly, speaking of this unity, I've noticed that um, since the new government was formed, it's extraordinarily difficult to get anybody to say anything. In fact, you're just about the first Liberal federal member I've been able to speak to, <laughs> because all the others say, no, no, we have to talk to the Prime Minister's office, we're not allowed to say anything unless Mr Abbott has approved it, and thus far he's not approving much. Um, is, is that the way it's going to be now, that it's going to become a, a very presidential style of government, which is a bit like what Kevin Rudd used to do? Well, look, Tom, I, I can't see that anybody would give up an opportunity to talk mm. with you or your listeners. Well, you'd but, be surprised. <laughs> but, <laughs> nice but, but, um, but, but, but quite honestly, nothing has actually changed between how we dealt with media in opposition and how we deal with media now. Mm. Um, everybody as a courtesy always notifies the Leader of the Opposition's office and now the Prime Minister's office. I've been told they actually have to ask this permission. Is, this is, well, everybody, everybody has autonomy, um, mm. as you would expect. Every minister has autonomy. They have their own staff. Um, they make their own decisions in relation to these things, but it's a matter of courtesy and respect, and frankly, it's also a matter of being up to date with the latest goings on. Um, you know, Not everybody can be on top of all issues all of the time, because frankly, ministers and members of parliament have to be out in their electorates doing their job, and they can't simply be sitting in front of the television or listening to the radio um, for every latest piece of news. So well, you can learn a lot of things listening to the radio. Well, well, indeed, indeed. But this is why, this is why, of course, I'm, I'm, I'm not saying it's a bad thing. I'm simply saying that um, this is why you make a, a telephone call in to find out what, what's been going on if you haven't had the opportunity to, to be listening. Uh, let's see what Sue has to say. Good afternoon, Sue. Good afternoon, Tom. Just wanted to put a woman's point of view across here. Swinging voter. Uh, I did vote liberal this time. But I wanted to say 
it makes no difference to me whatsoever how many women are in the Liberal Party um, cabinet in so much as if the people that are put in there can do the job and do the job to the best of the party's ability, that's all I want as a voter. Do you care, Sue, that there's also not many Victorians in the top jobs? Like we said, we've sort of had a bit of a fall from grace within the Liberal Party. Not necessarily. I think if they can... Uh, the party works as a whole. The party has to function with a number of people. So as long as everybody is being represented, that's all that matters. Sue, thank you very much for the call. Now, Kelly, on another issue, uh, ABC News 24 is reporting this afternoon that anywhere between 44 and 70 asylum seekers have been taken back to Indonesia, I believe, by the Australian Navy. Details are still sketchy at the moment. Um, is this a vindication of the tow back and possibly burn the boats policy? Well, I've heard, obviously, the reports... Sorry, you've got to buy the boat, then burn the boat. Yeah, yeah I've heard the reports, um, Tom, that you've just mentioned, but uh, um, obviously this is going to be a matter for the Minister to, to confirm whether, in fact, this has occurred or not. Um, no confirmation has been provided as yet. Um, the Minister has been very clear that we're not going to run a commentary on, on all things related to our Operation Borders um, operation um, well, day can, in, day out. Well, can I just say that, though? I mean, a lot of people are, are, are very sceptical about this. They're saying it's been sort of given the, the imprimatur of a military operation so that military levels of secrecy can be applied to it. Is, is, is that legitimate? No, it's, it, it's not military levels of secrecy. Firstly, we're, we're putting together um, a, an effective task force under the auspices of Lieutenant Colonel Angus Campbell so that we can run an effective implementation of the Coalition's plan on border protection. And that's bringing together more than 10 different departments and organisations within the government and it's having a very clear line of responsibility. Now there's no secrecy around it. The point that the Minister has made is we're not going to run a commentary on it day in day out but what we will do is we will provide weekly updates and I think that's sensible. I mean the government was completely headless on all sorts of things. It was talking about um, you know certain things as they happened before they happened. Um, it was promising all sorts of things and then failed to deliver. Um, people Richard, don't want is, that. People that want true? methodical stable government. What we were guilty of was transparency uh, and, and, that's, uh, and that is now what uh, the new government is accusing us of having been. Uh, and what we, don't, what we absolutely know is that whatever happened out there in terms of whether a boat was turned back, we're not going to find out that from the government uh, because the government's made it completely clear that for operational reasons, and you're going to hear that phrase a lot, precisely because of the point you made, Tom, uh, this is not a, a fundamentally a, a military issue. Uh, if it was, it would be the Defence Minister giving the commentary here. It's the Immigration Minister. Well, and the that's, fact that that's true, but we are using military of assets. Of I mean, we're using, and, and, using the Australian Navy. Uh, that's true, and, and, and often military assets are used for civil functions, for example, if there is a natural disaster. But what's novel about this is that we've got uh, a general, who, who, who is a fine general, I might say, General Campbell. Uh, is he a general? Or you said he, he's lieutenant, he's lieutenant, lieutenant General Angus Campbell. Oh, he's, general. He's a, um, he, he is a fine officer. But the, the novel situation that we have now is he will actually be, in effect, in charge of uh, civil servants in the Immigration Department. Now, if what that is doing is being used as a veil to hide the truth on an occasion like this, well, then that's a real problem, and that's well, what that, we're going to see. But that's simply not true, Richard. I mean, to make that assertion is, is simply not correct, and it is very, very mischievous and, dare I say, it, somewhat dishonest to say that, because we have said we will provide weekly updates. We're not going to run though, a minute by the minute, back. not not a minute by minute, hour by hour, you know, commentary, which is what the government did. And by the way, the reason that the government, as, as did, previous as government, Scott got Morrison. into so much trouble, the reason why the previous government got into so much trouble, is not because you were transparent. It's because you promised one thing and did something completely different. Um, you you completely failed to manage expectations because you you failed to meet them. We, well, the we, shadow minister in opposition gave out a press release every time a boat arrived. Now that he's a minister, uh, we're going to get these weekly reports. And on turning back the boats, which was the heart of the coalition's policy going into the election, they're not going to tell us whether they ever turn but, a boat but back. But we're not going to talk about it. We're going to do it. Yeah, exactly. We're not going to talk about it. <laughs> well, look, I'm afraid for the two of you, just as we've hit a very rich mine of uh, opinion here, we, we have run out of time. Richard Miles, Kelly O'Dwyer, thank you so much for both coming into the studio today. Thank you. Great. And we'll do it again in a fortnight, and uh, we'll see about these weekly reports about stopping turning back, possibly buying and burning the boats, amongst other things. 9 6 9 3 13, 13.